All right, so uh, as in chapter two, we approximate the pressure and get the following expression. On either face of the fluid particle. So bringing these together, The pressure force in the streamwise direction on the infinitesimal fluid particle can be written as P minus delta PS, delta N delta Y minus P plus delta PF, delta N delta Y, which is minus two delta PS delta N delta Y which is minus dpds delta s delta n delta y which can be written like this all right so now bringing this all together the net force acting on the fluid particle in the streamwise direction is the force due to the weight in the streamwise direction plus the force due to the pressure in the streamwise direction. And we can express it as minus gamma sine theta minus the pressure gradient in the streamwise direction times the infinitesimal volume. And that's equation three, three. From the okay. All right, now if we combine equations 3, 2, and 3, 3, from the previous slide, we obtain the equation of motion for a steady and viscid flow along the streamline. So minus gamma sine theta minus del P del S equals rho V del V del S equals rho A sub S. Um, we can rearrange this. And we get minus gamma dz ds, I'll tell you where that comes from in just a moment, minus dp ds is equal to one half rho d v squared by ds. Uh, and this is coming from the fact that along the streamline, um, sine theta, is equal to dz ds, right? If you look at the geometry from the figure on the previous page. All right, this simplifies to the following. Along a streamline. dp plus one half rho d v squared velocity squared plus gamma dz equals zero. This is equation 3.5. Uh, for constant g, we can integrate this. Or we can integrate part of it. <laughs>
dp over rho plus one half v squared plus gz equals a constant along a streamline. Uh, this is equation 3.6. And then finally, if we assume that rho and gamma are both constant, we obtain the Bernoulli equation. P plus one half rho v squared plus gamma z equals constant along a streamline. Super important equation in fluid dynamics. Um, one of the first results in fluid dynamics in history. This is equation 3.7 in the textbook and it's the Bernoulli equation. We'll be dealing with this a lot. Um, before we move on to an example, I wanna remind you about all the assumptions that we made to derive this equation. Whenever you seek to apply the Bernoulli equation, you must make sure that you have a steady, inviscid, incompressible flow along a streamline. All right, so let's look at an example of applying the Bernoulli equation. Um, consider a cyclist cycling through still air at a constant speed, V naught, in the forward direction. Uh, and you can see in the figure here, there's a point one in the free stream um, labeled with V naught, and then there's a point right in front of the cyclist's face, right out of his nose, labeled point two with V two equals zero. So let's talk through the assumptions. First assumption is, even though the air is still and the cyclist is moving forward, it's a lot easier to deal with this problem if we reverse it and assume that the cyclist is still, and the air is coming around the cyclist with a constant speed v naught toward him. Um, second thing I want to note is we can imagine a streamline because there's nothing obstructing the flow between point one and point two, so it is reasonable to draw a streamline between point one and point two. Third thing I want to note is that at point two, it ends right at the cyclist's nose, let's say, so that's a stagnation point, right, because it comes into contact with the body and the velocity has to come to zero there by the no slip condition which says that a fluid flowing has to have the same velocity as any surface it's in contact with. And that's true in most cases and certainly in this class. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and apply the Bernoulli equation. So we imagine a streamline passing through points one and two. And in fact, in that direction from point one to point two. So we write down for point one, we know that P1 plus one half rho V1 squared plus gamma Z1 is equal to some constant C1. 
at point two, P2 plus one half rho V2 squared plus gamma Z2 is equal to C2. And because point one and point two lie along the same streamline, C1 is equal to C2. All right, some other things. We can assume that the elevation is the same. Um, and we can assume that V1 is equal to V0, as we discussed before, um, and that V2 equals zero because it's a stagnation point. All right, so equating these two then, we see P1 plus, we'll just write it out again, rho V1, it's called V1 as V naught squared plus gamma Z1 equals P2 plus one half rho. We've already said that V2 is zero squared plus gamma Z2. Now, these two cancel because Z1 is equal to Z2. And so what we're left with is P1 and P2 and velocity V1. So we get rearranging P2 minus P1 is equal to one half rho V1 squared is equal to one half rho V naught squared. All right, and that's what we were asked for, the difference in pressure between points one and two. Right, so we know the free stream velocity was V naught. We chose a point at the cyclist body, which we knew was a stagnation point where the velocity was zero. As long as we know the density of air, which we can assume it's standard atmospheric density at sea level. Um, as, and then we can assume that the elevations are the same. It's quite straightforward to write down the pressure difference between the free stream and a point on the cyclist's body. And there we go first application of the Bernoulli equation. All right, so let us derive the um, balance of forces in the normal direction on a streamline, and then we'll wrap up for today. All right, so there are many situations and systems where you have curved streamlines, for example, in a tornado, right? Um, so now we're going to consider that balance of forces in the other direction. So if we look at our streamline here, we've got our fluid particle with mass delta M. Before we did a force balance along the streamline, now we're doing a force balance in the other direction, the orthogonal direction normal to the streamline. All right, so yeah, delta F now in the normal direction is equal to delta M V squared over R, right? That's our acceleration in the normal direction is equal to rho delta volume V squared over R. This is equation 3.8. Um, again, we're going to assume that it's only gravity and pressure that are exerting forces on the fluid particle. So now we're looking at the normal component of the weight force. DW sub N and it's equal to minus DW cosine theta. N can also be written as minus gamma delta volume cosine theta. Uh, and the net pressure force in the normal direction
delta f p n is minus to equal to minus d p d n delta s, delta n, delta y, right? So the particles extend along the streamline, normal to the streamline into the page is equal to minus dp dn delta volume. So putting these all together, we get delta fn is equal to the weight in the normal direction plus the pressure force in the normal direction, we can write that it says minus gamma cosine theta minus dpdn delta volume, and this is equation 3.9. All right, moving on, last page here, last slide. Um, combining 3, 8, and 3, 9. And using the fact that along the streamline, um, cosine theta is equal to dz dn, we can write this as minus gamma dz dn minus del p dn equals rho v squared over r. That's 310a. And it's the equation of motion for the particle along the normal direction. If we neglect gravity, which uh, we do pretty often, This becomes del P del N is equal to minus rho V squared over R, the radius of curvature. This is 310B. Um, and so here, if we neglect gravity, we can see that the pressure increases with increasing radius, right? So if you're imagining that tornado again, as you go radially outward, the pressure increases. As you go toward the center, you get that dreaded low pressure that causes that, that bad weather event. All right, multiplying 310A by dn and using an identity. The identity is that dp dn is equal to dp dn if s is constant. Um, and then integrating across the streamline. we get integral of dp over rho plus the integral of v squared over radius of curvature dn plus gz equals constant. Now the Bernoulli equation, it was constant along a streamline. This is constant across the streamline. And this is equation 311. For incompressible flow, this simplifies. And we get P plus rho integral of V squared over R dn plus gamma z equals constant across a streamline. And that's equation 312. We don't use that one nearly as much as we use the Bernoulli equation, but just to recap, 
we summed the forces on a fluid particle and integrated them in the streamwise direction, got the Bernoulli equation. Here, we summed the forces normal to the streamline and integrated them and got this equation. Um, we don't use this equation, as I just said, nearly as much as the Bernoulli equation, but the same assumptions apply, you know, steady, inviscid, incompressible for the last version of the equation, um, flow across a streamline. All right, nobody here to ask questions right now, um, but I just want to take a quick look ahead in the course. So on Wednesday, we will be continuing to talk about the Bernoulli equation, uh, looking at it in a little bit more depth. Um, we'll talk about static stagnation, dynamic and total pressures. So basically along a streamline, the sum of those is a constant. And we'll talk about the differences between those. Those are basically the terms of the Bernoulli equation. Um, and then we'll apply the Bernoulli equation in some common scenarios like free jets, um, confined flows like the flow in a tank uh, or the flow through a nozzle uh, and for flow rate measurements. And then Hyung Gan's got his problem solving session on Friday with these problems listed here. And that wraps us up for today. Thank you. Hope you have a great start of your week and I will see you guys on Wednesday.